you uh, you said you wanted an intro, yeah? I will. All right, so I'll start now. I've got a Premier League glass. Hi, everyone. Oh, sorry. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake. Right. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi Jay. Hello Josh. Tell you what, it's been a fucking long season, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it has, yeah. It's really dragged out for me. Personally. <laughs> I'm about ready for it to end. Um, I am convinced Tottenham v Everton was about 900 minutes long. Oh, it was. I'm con- I'm convinced. It was so like it was so long. So I remember watching it. And uh, you, you know, you think like, oh, it'll be half time soon, and it's like twenty minutes in. <laughs> it was one of those. Yeah, well, we'll get onto that in a bit. Um, we're going to start off talking about. Uh, obviously, we're a United fan, a Chelsea fan, a Tottenham fan, so we're going to quickly talk about Leeds Liverpool to start off with, aren't we, Jay? <laughs> it's the only right progression, I think. Because uh, me and Jay have a bit of an argument about Leeds, and I'm just going to die on this hill. I'm ready. Uh, yeah, same. Let's do it. <laughs> right, Leeds. <laughs> And not going to do as well as anyone thinks. And before we get back, let's just fully... Jay's not one of those... I might be putting words in your mouth. But Jay's not one of those pundits that are saying that Leeds have a divine right to break into the top six or even top half of the table because God, they're man. Leeds. God, I know Jay doesn't think that. However, Jay thinks they're going to do well and shock some people. And I do think they're going to shock some people. Norwich shocked Man City last season. Shall However, I, Shall I just leave? You're I making both it. parts of the argument, you know. Shall I just go? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it. I just think they're going to be so stupid and they're going to throw away so many points through their own stupidity and almost arrogance because it doesn't matter what team you are. You, Fulham fucking smashed up the championship with Sesson Young on the wing, scoring a hat full of goals. And they got to the Premier League and literally teams like Southampton went, sit down. <laughs> um, like, sorry, that's that's my first part. Yeah, well, to, you say that, yeah, but the first game of the season they play in this new league for them, new league, you know, uh, was a very exciting game against Liverpool where they took it to them, the champions, the best team in England right now. They took a game to them. They they made a meal of it. And you know what? To be fair, it was only their own silly pen that cost them the game. If they the football didn't I mean, cost it, yeah, I game. don't think that was a pen. So I guess that's a yeah a fair point. The, but the, I the don't, first one, the second one was. I don't think yeah the, yeah yeah yeah, the, but like the, it was that because of that that cost them the game. It wasn't the football. The football itself took the game to Liverpool, made the like made some silly mistakes, and they ultimately got three goals out of it. Like if you play that football against the likes of West Ham, Fulham, like these teams that are a bit dead at the moment. You're going to win. And if you play that football against teams like us, Josh, me and you included, like our team who, you know, was very slow yesterday, your team that actually lost the other day, if they play that football against us, I think they're going to shock us. And and I don't want to play them now. I think it's scary. Okay, here's my counter-argument to that. Go on. I think that... that, So Bielsa himself has said that no matter what position in, no matter who they're facing, they're going to play the Leeds way in the way that Bielsa wants them to play, right? Mm -hmm. Every person with a... Tiny, the tiniest ounce of footballing brain could see that Leeds should have settled for 3-3 and started to set out the stall to take no. a point from Anfield, like you said. the be- No, Jay, they're the best team in England. A point at Anfield is a fucking phenomenal first Yeah, but so what? It was, it was 3-3 at like they what, went, they were, they were unbeaten minutes. for like four years or five years, Jay, before... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hear like, me out. Yeah. But like it was, what, 3-3 free, free at like 70 minutes, yeah? Something like that. There was 20 minutes left. You don't just... Need you don't need to sit in if your football's already created. You do three if goals. you were recently. No, if but if you're recently, if, but, but Liverpool's football is going to create more chances, and it did. It 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 did. It was a penalty though. Like it was a silly. It was no, a, it doesn't matter. You, it doesn't. If if Leeds lose their next ten games, three, two, four, three, five, four, <laughs> they still have zero points. No, okay, because no, that's, they need to just have a bit of knowledge about them to say this is a good result. A point at Anfield is fantastic for Chelsea, for United, for City, for Arsenal, for Tottenham, for Leeds. It's a good yeah. point. Yeah, no, I, I, and they, I, I, I get that. But, but my issue is... Go on. My issue is, if they do not change the way they play, they're going to be 2-1 up against Crystal Palace and still not set out the stall to take the three points. 
Meaning that Wilfred Zaha's going to go, thank you very much. Meaning that Red- Redmond's going to go, thank you very much. Meaning that St. Maxman's going to go, thank you very much. Because they're going to just... They, they, I don't think Leeds or Bielsa knows how to just sit in. And the issue is, I think, if they don't have enough points by the midpoint of the season... They're going to collapse like Leeds do every season. And if they do not have a nice, stable footing before the Bielsa collapse, which has happened every season without fail, they're fucked. So I, I, I completely get your point. And, 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 you know, and you have to learn how to take games. But I think with yeah, the, other, the other day's game, like, I feel like they saw an opportunity to win. And and if you see an opportunity to win, you should go for it. And and no team should be condemned for doing that. I genuinely think they could have got another goal out that game, so they act, they went for but they it. Didn't. <laughs> but no, the, but yeah, but they didn't. But they went for it. So you can't say, oh, you sh- fucking should have done this. Like no, if they thought they was gonna win, fucking go for it. Because what's better than a draw at Anfield, a win at Anfield? So no, I I disagree. With but that. they got a loss. Yeah, no, they, but, they, got, they got a loss. Yeah, but this that's it's un- <laughs> it was unfortunate, right? But. <laughs> And I get what you're saying, and it's ve- it was very unfortunate to get the loss there, but it was that there was the sense of that they could have done something, and I think if they have that against you know, like I said already, Fulham, uh, you know, or teams like that, West Ham, they'll go and get another goal and go and win, so they will get the points there. So yeah, they didn't get the points this game, but I think in other games they can go and get them points, and they will, you know, I, I think they'll definitely definitely do well this season. I don't think they'll, I think they'll be like. 10th which is brilliant for a promoted team I really do I think that football that we watched the other day it was it's more exciting than what we were playing last night it was more exciting my, than your my game it can win games ending point my ending point would be I agree that it can win games but for me when I watch Leeds and I watch maybe two games so I'm not going to claim for the last season but like <laughs> I've you know and I've watched the, the Liverpool game and if it continues like that it feels to me like Bielsa is walking out onto a Premier League pitch every week and he's just rolling a dice. And sometimes it'll come up sixes. It will. Mm. But it is it is just a roll of the dice because even teams that aren't that... Like, think a team that's not brilliant in the Premier League, no offence to whoever I pick here, uh, let's say Southampton are quite good now. Um, Palace won. West this Ham. is my issue. Though. There's a lot of... Premier League teams that are not fucking West. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of Premier League teams that are, are really good. And I, I think when people talk about the quality of the league getting worse, I completely disagree. I think the quality of the league's getting better and then a few are running away. Like, But overall, all the gaps are t- closing. And the fact that Leeds bought in... Maybe Rodrigo will be class. I mean, he played for Bolton 10 years ago. I'm sure he's a better player than he was then. But uh, Yeah, I'm very sure that he's I a just, better player. I don't since, yeah. see... I don't see this. She- it's, they're not like Sheffield coming up and going. This is how we play. This is our system. It's them coming up and running around like madmen. And then in the seventieth minute of games, and more importantly, the second half of the season, they kind of run out of gas. And I think Leeds will lose, or not even lose, lose or concede to to make it a draw. A lot of goals past the seventieth minute in the Premier League because I don't know about you, Calvin Phillips didn't particularly impress me for England. No. I don't see him keeping out all of the goals as and that before it gets to that defence. I just don't see it. But yeah. the the players they have, the only reason they're there is because of Bielsa. The only reason they've had this massive upturn is because of Bielsa. But at the same time, the only reason they're falling from those heights is also because of um, Bielsa. He's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't. I like the guy, but <sighs> I just I just think I just have very Reserved feelings. Fair enough. But right. beautiful away kit there. Beautiful away kit, and fair, fair enough. And that was one thing I'll say, and this is oh, this oh. is to your side of the argument. Mm. But Liverpool two, three years ago were playing very pressing, very attacking, mad football. They were scoring loads of goals, but they weren't winning loads of games. And even Klopp had to change so to to win the Premier League. Like he had to show. But they also won't. He's he's yeah. categorically will not. Yeah, he will lose so. his job before he changes. Also, just one final Leeds point, as because the, the only other reason they deserve to be relegated, I've never seen such a poorly designed on-field home kit. I don't know if you saw Jay, but you could see 
all of the vests that the players oh, wore through the home kit. You know what? And it upset me. This is how this massively. is how I'm, this is why I'm happy me and you do a podcast, Josh. <laughs> it upset me so much as well. Because I saw the one guy and I was like, Oh come on, what's going on there? And then all of them was the same. All of them. And you can just, just see the vest oh. underneath and it's like, oh just make it was a sad time, wasn't it? Make a thicker a thicker shirt. Yeah, they should just go down. Then you don't that. even need the vest. <laughs> maybe they've all got really maybe the lead squad all have really pronounced nipples. Maybe, and then they all need to hide it. I all need the, the extra layer of vest. <laughs> oh, it right. was very upsetting. Top knots and vests. Yeah. Get that to the championship. Top. Man bun FC, yeah. Uh, fucking hell, but man, man bun and vest. <laughs> man Off bun and get. vest FC. Right, there you go, Leeds fans. That's probably the most we'll ever talk about Leeds this season. <laughs> until <laughs> until we'll they see. inevitably slap, slap one of our teams. Uh, talk about slapping uh, teams. Everton Spurs, Josh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It was there was no slapping. It was no slapping. Was but... no, uh, no, we we completely deserve to lose. I'm not going to be around that. I've already made my reaction video. Go watch um, that. You can, that was the last video we made. You can check that out. I got called um, a fair few names. No, no, I didn't actually get insulted that much, but there's a few points I'd like to clear up about that. Like I said that Ndombele was good when he came on. Mm. I admit that was an overstatement. However, he gave away the ball a lot and he did a lot of shit things. Yeah. However, the, the, the quality balls that he did play were the best things I'd seen in the entire 90 minutes from both sides. Like, did, I, did, I don't know if you saw the first the first two balls in Dombele played when he came on the pitch reinstated that he's not fully there yet and he, he might never be fully there for Tottenham. But And you might mock me for saying this, Jay, but I promise you he is a world beater. He may never be a world beater for Tottenham. But he has so much quality. He's so good. Okay. I promise you. I mean, there was, he might. There was that he one. might go and debroide us. We might get rid of him. Mourinho might get rid of him. He will go somewhere and he will come back as a hundred million pound player. He is I phenomenal. Will, I hope that happens and I'll never let you forget it. Because <laughs> boy, have I not forgot no, Salah and De Bruyne. I bro. know. <laughs> I I know. But like. Honestly, and then he and then he gave away a lot of shit passes, and he he, he looked lazy, and that's a sad thing. Mm-hmm. But I just think uh, I've got I've got two easy fixes for Tottenham. I think, and this is me directly saying that I think I have a better Mourinho, understanding step and out the way, of our squad. Step out but, the way, just and I know that's bollocks. But for, <laughs> for me, there's two very simple things that to fix Tottenham, right? Yeah. And it's just within our own squad. Yeah. Even if they've got, he has a bad few first games, and obviously Lacelso had a knock. Play in Dombele and Lacelso together with one of the other players. Ideally, that would be Hoiberg if he t- just had a one-off shit game. Hopefully, he's not that shit for us forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> was, I genuinely bl- believe. I was watching all or nothing last night, the final three episodes, and I forgot what a creative. I, I see a lot of Tottenham fans saying Lacelso isn't a creative figure. Obviously, he's no Ericsson. But he really, like Ericsson used to, when he wasn't scoring or assisting, Ericsson made us tick as a team, you know, just passing the balls, you know, David Silver-esque, mm-hmm. keep retaining possession, spraying a ball there, spraying a ball there. That's Lo Celso, to a lesser extent, and he needs to grow into that role. He had a knock. I firmly believe that game would have been a lot better from us, not necessarily a victory, but we would have done a lot more with Lo Celso on the pitch. Okay? In Dombele... Give him time, because you know what? We're fucked anyway this season, so we might as well throw him on and see if he comes good. How are you already fucked, bro? It's one game. No, I know we're not fucked. I know we're not. I know we're not fucked, but there's not a lot of inspiration. Second point is, is I you you know how much I love the guy, but for me, no, no. (laughs) for me, he um, he looks very much out of his depth where we conceded like. It was kind of him that kind of went, oh, God. And he made a few mistakes towards the back end of last season. Obviously, some of them that I disagree with, like the Pogba penalty. But you've got Tanganga and Sanchez, who I believe have to start over Dyer. I'm yeah. sorry, Dyer. I love you as a guy. I really do. But I want to see this. The, the, uh, it's it's... Uh, Alderweireld's Alde the experienced head. You know, the, the guy that's been there and done it and is the older guy I want to see like in this in the all or nothing documentary Mourinho was talking about how much pace and power Tanganga has and Davidson Sanchez has that as well and we paid 46 million to bring him in from Ajax like mm. 
they're good players, and I just think we need to have a settled squad. But it's not the settled squad that Mourinho currently has. Yeah, he has a lot of. Uh, he loves Dyer, doesn't he? he? It's very clear he that does. he really does. And Davies, I don't believe Dyer. that Davies is the answer. I like Davies, I do. Again, he only, if he he would have gone down as a legend if he'd rattled home that screamer against Arsenal where he slammed it against the crossbar. But I, I don't think uh, Mourinho seems to think he's like. I don't know, I can't really think, like a, a Philip Lahm. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's not. <laughs> like, yeah. The thing is, with, ben Davies. With, with your game, your your performance, it was just, it was it was very, you know, uninspiring. At the, and and it, was, it always looked like you was waiting for someone to just do something, you know what I mean? Like, just hoping Son would get the ball and do something magical. There was no real structure there and... And even when you started bringing subs on, it did that. Even that didn't feel structured. Like you just brought Bergvine mm. on, and he he didn't come in. Like he didn't replace a wing or anything. Like it was all just like right. It was all seemed a bit desperate towards the end, and it, which was which was sorry, but it was just a bit mad because no, okay. really, you know, if it weren't for Pickford having a really good game, you could it could have been one one at half time easily, even two one. So, you know, I think you lost your heads a little bit in a game where you could have been a bit more composed and I don't know if that's the players, I don't know if that is Mourinho at half time or something, but that's what it looked like to me. No, I no, I completely agree. My one slightly confusing point of the game was I don't know what you thought. I know he didn't do much, but just in terms of having a few nice moments and a bit of a threat, Deli Ali to me looked like one of our best players. So it was weird that he was the first sub, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he, he looked a bit. I think he looked all right. I'd say he looked better than Kane did, especially. And I know you don't have really anyone yeah. to come on for Kane, but Kane looked off the pace for me he, that game, and he, yeah. and he and did then, for England as well. And my final point is just in terms of like, there's a lot of hate on Twitter at the moment. People want Enoch out of our club. They're the owner, the mm. investment company. People want Levy out. People are saying like, I saw one tweet that just really stuck with me and it just said, look at our midfield compared to the rest of the the top six. And I didn't really have that because I know that it hasn't quite worked and it's not working at the moment, but I still believe there's something there. Obviously I'm biased and I have hope, but on paper, Lo Celso, Ndombele, Hoiberg, Winks and Sissoko isn't a bad midfield. No, Obviously, that's, like that's, if, that's if, a... if you take the front three of those and every if if Lo Celso played how he did at Betis, if um and Dombele played how he did at Lyon, which was incredible, that that they they cost a hundred over a hundred million for the pair of them. Yeah. That's not Enoch that a hundred million pound midfield what what do you want? Like that is a <laughs> That's investment. <laughs> that is investment. And if it hasn't gone I don't if it hasn't gone right so far, that's not I do believe Enoch needs to do more, and it is. It, I do. Com- I'm not completely fanboying over fucking Levy and Enoch. However, Hoiberg should be a sensible signing. How many? I've I've seen Athletic articles. I've seen Tifo. I've seen the Guardian. I've seen Football Weekly. Not one person has gone. Why the fuck have Spurs bought Hoiberg? Like on paper, it didn't work for Everton, and maybe he'll just ha- he had one bad game, but. It works as a signing, doesn't it? It it makes sense. He's a good signing, yeah. Uh, and okay, okay, but it was shit, and it was a great goal by Calvert Lewin. I love Calvert Lewin. He would be the perfect backup striker. Uh, Hamas Rodriguez looked really good. That's what I wanted to say. I said let's not overlook Everton's <laughs> decent performance. Pickford had a great game. Allen had a class game. You touched on it in your uh, fan game. Like he mm. could, he should have been man of the match. He fitted right. Kukure in. is a top signing. Yeah, <laughs> like he fitted right in. Like. The only thing I would say is, I'm not saying Tottenham are shit. Everton were clearly good, but it's very hard to judge Tottenham or Everton. Were Everton a step up now, or were Tottenham a massive step down now? Like I, I don't know. Yeah, it, that's a shame. How like, to judge the two teams? Yeah, because you're both. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Like you don't know who's going where and what's happening. I think you know Everton as well. Like they, that was a great performance against uh, a slow Spurs. Could they do it against the Liverpool? You know, you don't know just because like. Also, you got a caveat like pretty much every game we're talking about with the fact that hardly any of the top teams have had a proper pre season due to the international break and stuff like So, a lot of your players haven't had much time to play together. But, yeah. Hmm. All right. Should we move all on right, to the that's Chelsea all I game? Say, really. Yeah, if you want. <laughs> so. Actually, I, 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 oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. We have to, fuck Josh. You, we, can't, Timo we can't fucking not talk about it. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, fuck you, Timo Werner. I lost my fantasy point, fantasy league by one point. No. Do I know you won the penalty, but do an assist, do a goal, and I would have taken a good lead against Ross fucking Walling. And that... <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Yeah. That's yeah. Crap. Anyway, so yeah, Chelsea Brighton, uh, a very slow, unenthusiastic first half. Uh, but it's exactly what I just said, though. It's the fact that we've not had a preseason. We've got a couple of players coming in that haven't played together yet, uh, and also our defense is still the same defense as last season. So we can't expect too much. But ultimately, uh, we we got three points from the game, which I was ecstatic about because. I reckon this game last season, we would have either drew or lost because you know when uh, they uh, was it Trossard that scored that goal. When that goes in, Kepa lets it oh, in God, quite, yeah. quite an easy fucking save. It just looks sad, it, and and he looked upset. He was like, "For God's sake, people, people!" Uh, he knows, he knows. And uh, when that goes in, last season, I think our mentality just goes straight down. It goes straight down and we draw or lose that game. That's just what... Like, I had that feeling watching that game. But this time around, it didn't happen. Reese James was like, no thank you, and scored a fucking world-class goal. It was unreal. Did you see it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was, it was unreal. He was our best player. He assisted and he scored. And he just kind of, he's kind of proving why he should be playing at right back, which is such a weird, conflicting feeling with Asby be, should it's supposed to be there. Uh, but he's just, he's classy, he needs to be there. Uh, like you already touched on it, Werner didn't make any actual contributions, which I was annoyed by because my fantasy team was slightly hindered by that as well. But he, he did look sharp. He was very sharp. He was very on it. Uh, for the penalty, to be fair, like it was a mistake from Brighton and within the second he was running at the goalkeeper. Like yeah, no. Werner, yeah. No, I said, yeah, no. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought, you, I thought you said Werner, like, question mark. <laughs> um, Werner? Who? Who's that? Uh, so he was class. Uh, Havertz looked a bit off the pace and slow, but again, you know, it's his first time in the Chelsea shirt. I can't condemn him too much. He had some nice touches as well. Like, yeah, yeah. That. And to like, be fair, he lost, gonna... he lost the ball in the, at the halfway line and fucking sprinted to get it back and made a last-ditch tackle near the, the box. Like, he, his work rate was there. Uh, the only thing... But you expect that for 90 million. Oh, oh yeah, obviously. Also, it was like 70 mil. Uh... Well, there's add-ons, isn't there? Yeah, but... They yeah. ain't, we ain't paid yeah. that yet. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the only thing, the only scary thing is that this defense looks shaky still. Kind of, you know, with, you know, Zuma, Christensen had a good game actually, but Zuma looked kind of shaky. And, and it's the, it's the goalkeeping situation, isn't it? Second, he starts flop flopping stuff like that. The defense get nervy, you know what I mean? Because if they don't do anything, it's gonna go in. So that that mm. that was a worry, but ultimately, this is like. This is like a pre-season game because we haven't added a yet and we got three points. So I'm absolutely buzzing with it. Well, you, you are following a pattern now, aren't you? Um, in terms of you know you know now know what the next step is that's needed. Yep. Pep comes in, gets rid of Hart, Bravo shit, buys Edison, boom, yeah, fucking sorted. Klopp comes in, Mignolet's not doing it for him, obviously. <laughs> he goes, nah, I'm not having this. Brings in Allison, boom. Chelsea, you've spent two hundred million, and you know. Let's be honest, you would probably swap. You'd probably swap Z- Ziak, wouldn't you, for All Black? If I gave you the option right now, I'm not saying you hate Ziak. I'm just saying, yeah. If I could say to you right now, you never sign Ziak, but you got fucking All Black in. Yeah, our Black you'd is. You'd be like, our Black is like a game and changer, if, man. And a few, there's a few signings you've brought in. Obviously, Havertz is too exciting maybe to make that transfer for Werner if he's a proper number nine Chelsea struggle with proper number nine so I get it but at the same time there's I could I could feed you a lot of your squad and offer you a little swap for someone like Olbach or yeah. to start to Stegen and you'd be like yeah Ooh, you'd okay. buy your hand off because <laughs> like yeah the progression the the format that's happened in a couple couple of years yeah you're exactly right and I had that in my notes I said Allison changed Liverpool and if we get that it's it will look positive because then the back line will be a bit more stable as well because that's exactly what happened with Liverpool and City as well. 
Are there any Brazilian ones left? Because then you can fully follow. The <laughs> Who's format. the Brazilian third keeper? <laughs> you just get Julio Cesar out of retirement. <laughs> Come on, lad. Come on, mate. It's just like, no, please, you, you will, misunderstand. You will change. This, our this team. will not work. And you're like, get in, get in get here in now. Well, I mean, we're supposed to be getting that Mendy in from, from Ren. Yeah. And he's everyone's saying he's supposed to be competition for Kepa, but no, like, I think, like, whoever, if we buy a goalkeeper, he needs to go in. <laughs> well, you know, well, you'll have one, you'll have a classic PR stunt, won't you? Kepa will play the first game when he comes in. Yeah, yeah. And then. He'll then play the rest. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. Oh, right, I think we're done for part one. That's all the games that's happened so far. Nice. We'll take a break and come back for part two. Okay, uh, just as a quick shout out before we uh, continue part two. Um, just a shout out to the group of beer drinking um, 17, 18, 19 year olds, whatever they were, uh, in Windermere yesterday. I went for a swim and plucked at the courage to ask them if I could join in their <laughs> game of 4v4. And it's the first football I've played for like four months since COVID uh, struck and uni finished and all of that. So uh, I'm a broken man today. I've been kicked in the ankle. My back hurts. I scored <laughs> a few decent goals, then had an average performance, but it was fun. And then I got to like experience the full life of a professional athlete and after my broken, crippled body limped off the pitch, I walked to the end of the pier and just fell in to what was essentially an ice bath. Uh, <laughs> it was heaven. Um, I, uh, yeah. I have to admit, I'm extremely jealous. I haven't played un- uh, football since uni properly. Like, yeah, no, it I've took, it took a good it. three, four minutes of me stood there looking at these guys. Like, not They couldn't see me. That would have been weird. But and I was thinking like, oh, do do I ask him? And I was like, look, guys, I just want to play football. We all, you know what it's like. Please. And then it was kind of weird because I was I was playing, and then like there's a group of lads playing football. There were some that weren't playing football, and they were with like some, some a group of girls. And the girl, I literally heard one of the girls go, "Who is that?" And the guy went, "I don't know. He just asked to play." And at that point, <laughs> I felt quite lame. But <laughs> he just at the same time. I, write, I scored a half volley and I rifled one in and then one of the kids even asked to play with me and then from then fatigue set in and what that I had to you know remind myself was that I was a 24 year old with, with side fat and these were all a bunch of young kids uh, it was alright it was good uh, moving on uh, <laughs> back to the actual podcast <laughs> yeah speaking of speaking of football see good transition there Jay uh, PSG had a mad one <laughs> Good, good transition, Josh. Top mm. class podcast here. Yeah, PSG yeah. Yeah, did have a mad one. They, uh, yeah, uh, everyone saw it by now. They, had, they had like people are referring to it as in a mad brawl. I wouldn't really refer to it as that. It was a bit of a no, big was, scuffle. I've seen worse. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised that five yellows, five reds did get dished out for that. Like, or, or, I, I, I don't think I'm surprised, Ross. but it wasn't like as so, bad as the news put made out to be. Yeah, no, but I said this that. Every single year that passes and every single time something like this happens, it further enhances the miracle that no one was sent off at the Battle of the Bridge. I know, isn't it? It's mental. I was just thinking to myself, like, pretty sure Dembele tried to gouge Costa's eye out and he got did he he got a warning for it. Yeah, no, like, like <laughs> not even someone, either. someone pushed someone so hard that Gus Hiddink yeeted over the fucking like. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Hiddink yeah, was yeah. like, no, it just like, like. Honestly, that whole game, it could have been like ten reds each, man. <laughs> yeah. Just a goalkeeper. It should have just been a game of kings at the end. Goalkeeper. I know how. I know he's come out, Klattenberg, and said he purposely did it, but that's not the rules of football, no. Klattenberg. You've done a bad there. He should have actually... Well, as soon as he came out and went, I knew there was a few reds flying about, but Tottenham were fucking it anyway, so I just let the game continue. The FA should have gone, yeah, we need to actually ban you for a few games because genuinely Costa could have lost an eye and Dyer could have broken Fabregas' leg. Um, so, not okay, actually, Clattenburg. Can you imagine, just like, it's just Gus, just... Hid- Gus Hiddings lying there impaled on a sponsor. Costa's bleeding from his eyes and Clattenburg's like, well, you know, Tottenham didn't win the league. It's no, just uh, you... just not doing your job, mate. <laughs> no, you just, um, you just that's just negligence. That's what you've done. Uh, uh, but yeah, so back to Paris. 
<laughs> yeah, bad to bad. Um, it was just a bit. There was that whole uh, scuffle at the end. People, you know, going in there, uh, throwing. A, there's someone threw it for a, a, a little kick. Uh, la, la, Neymar clapped someone at the back of the head, which I really enjoyed. Uh, he's Apparent, come out afterwards. Allegedly, oh, racism. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. come out afterwards that it was racism, and he says the only thing he regrets is not punching him in the face. And if it is racism, which it probably is, fuck that well, guy. Well, I'm not. I'm not willing to, to comment on that. I've no. I've literally no idea. It, yeah, I we mean, say, we weren't. All we, we can say, there. if it is racism, fair fucking play. If it's not racism, not fair fucking play. That's literally all we can say on the matter. Exactly. Like. That. But you know you have to. But it has to be investigated. Allegedly, dear Maria spat on someone. That has to be investigated. We're in the fucking midst of COVID still. So yep. yeah, you know, that needs to be it, dealt with properly. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, and if it does backfire on PSG, if Neymar's red is upheld, if Di Maria gets banned for spitting, they've already lost their first two games of the season, and then to it, lose those players plus you know what paradise. And you know what they're missing, Josh? Chupet. Tiago Silva. Oh, not not Juper. Okay. Uh, no, not Juper. <laughs> they're not right. definitely not missing. I Juper. think I'm right. Um, they, they're missing Tiago Silva. The, the why? Where was oh, Tiago Silva yesterday? Just was he even on the bench? No, no. He's. I think he's still quarantining. Okay. Um, he'll be. I think he he came over to London like a week ago, so he's probably got another week before he's allowed out. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, yeah, and then so that happened, and you know, the back posts do not condone. We do condone a little bit of violence, probably, but we don't condone racism. <laughs> not uh, at all. <laughs> so you know, but we condone violence to racists. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, uh, let's move on because we're awful at what, talking about I, 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 topics I, I, like this. I forgot what the other thing was that we were talking about. Uh, it's it's bail. It's bail. It's it's. It's Gary Bale. <laughs> so again, um, I've done a video about this. Uh, yeah, check it out if you want. You it's two back now. Someone called me a pathetic. Someone called me pathetic uh, in the comments. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just sad. Wait, so this um, is this is this is just it though, isn't it? Because I mean, when I did the FA Cup fan cam, it was like just all Arsenal fans in the comments just giving me grief, and I was like, "But you guys are watching, so thank you." No, honestly, you can give us the views. I don't. We don't give a shit. It's got call me and. <laughs> My my relatives, anything you want, but I don't care as long as, as, long as your as views you, are there. As long as you're commenting um, and viewing, it's fine. <laughs> and if you want to continue insulting me, you can subscribe and then just as soon as I come out, you're a cunt. Yeah, hit the notification bell so then you know when to abuse us. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it, this is fine. smart. All out. Uh, anyway, I wanted to add, just add to the, uh, the the bail stuff because yeah, you made the video and it's it, there's that kind of like little bit of possibility you might be going back to Spurs, but not really, but kind of. But it's come out in the recent days that he's now linked with uh, a loan move to United if they don't get Sancho. I just want to know what you when think about that. When they don't get Sancho, um, when, it would be sad. <laughs> um, when they don't get him. If he goes to United, it's one of those clubs that the amount of Tottenham players that United have taken, like you can just be like, oh, fair play. Like I, I couldn't name all the Tottenham players that are like to, just to try a few. It would be Carrick, Sheringham, Berbatov, um, <laughs> like <laughs> just to they name go. a few. They go like yeah. they, they go. Oh, we're gonna get, like you need Sher- uh, Sheringham. Literally went. All oh, right, not really winning much at Tottenham. I went, oh, no. went, I'm just going to go to United for like a year or two or three and just win the treble. But I'll pop back after that. And we were like, yeah, all right. And he did that, scored Fair the winner enough. in the Champions League final, came back with his treble, joined Tottenham again and went, yeah, I'll have a few more goals if you want. Why not? <laughs> and we were like, yeah, cool, mate. Cheers, Teddy. Okay. <laughs> the... Anyway, um, so yeah, it's... If rumours are true, there's one, there's complete, there's two major things. One of them is saying that Real Madrid are willing to make him available for 18.5 million. Doesn't really work. The only reason I think that United will be very hesitant and why it's different um, for Tottenham buying him is because they've already been offered an incredibly good deal on incredibly, incredibly, incredibly high wages with Sanchez, and it just did not work. Yeah. Sanchez was class for Arsenal. He's been really good for Inter. Didn't work at United, so I would be. And it shattered Man United's wage structure, didn't it? They they 
they still haven't really recovered from that because they had to give all these other players contracts because they were like, well, why the fuck is Alexis Sanchez on 300k or whatever it was on? Or was that 500 was it in the end? Yeah, it was something like, ridiculous. so yeah. much money. So that's why I think United would be slightly hesitant because they probably don't want to make the same mistake because it does mm-hmm. smack of that. But at the same time, the other conflicting thing, which makes it more likely that Tottenham would get him even though we absolutely won't, is that there's rumours that it won't be a transfer and Madrid are willing to pay half his salary. In that way, Gareth Bale gets to play football and doesn't lose his livelihood. So, hmm. not his livelihood. He still has fucking livelihood if we give him 80k a week. He gives like fucking hell. But um, <laughs> I, I yeah. personally don't think he's. I don't think he's going to leave. No, Madrid. which is so sad because. No, it is. It's tremendously sad. I think you know he's he's very talented, and and I'd love to just see him play more regularly. Even if it was for Madrid, to see him play more regularly for Madrid, I'd rather that than anything. But yeah, uh, I don't think he will leave Madrid yet. I mean, they they. I feel like they're trying to get rid of him. They're offering to pay half of his wages, but I don't know. It's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. It's a Surely weird he can't saga. be the best influence of the dressing room if he because let's I, like I, I alluded to in my video. He's he said some silly things about Madrid. Mm hmm. And surely that's pissed off people like Ramos. Like, surely. So oh, surely yeah, it's of course. best to get him out of there. Mr. M- like, Real Madrid, Ramos, will be fucking fuming. They were trying to get him out. Yeah, the only thing um, I would say is, in his last season at Tottenham, to, let's say, his third season in Madrid, so across four seasons, I think you'd put him in the bracket. Bearing in mind this was before Lewandowski really started... Being a world beater, this before Mbappe, Neymar had only just come onto the scene with Barcelona. I would have put him in the top five players in the world bracket. Yeah, I mean, for the amount of money he went to Madrid, you'd you'd think they thought that as well, anyway. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's so. a shame, and he 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 just needs to play a few more seasons seasons of football before he can never play football at that level again. He he's only got four more years. Yeah, Max realistically. of top flight football and I it's think he's going to regret it, it. he's going to regret it if he doesn't go but we'll see uh, right let's move on uh, we'll quickly mention our FBL league so thank you everyone that joined the league for one we got way more people in than we thought we would who who would have thought people want football shirts Josh free football right, shirts make sure you're all subscribed otherwise fucking subscribe shit. you ain't getting um, no <laughs> but uh, I personally did shit this week but I got very lucky because it's a head-to-head tournament the guy I came up against had loads of City and United players who didn't play so I got very lucky and I got three points on the board uh you were less lucky Josh oh, I was so unlucky. <laughs> shout out to Ross, you Ross <laughs> Ross's bench saved him because <laughs> Saliba didn't play and he ended up pipping me by a point 50 to 49 and obviously unless you're Ross or Jay or Adam or Elliot, you don't know who Ross is. Ross is um, <laughs> my best friend and a fucking nightmare when it comes to all things football. He's an encyclopedia. He's he beats unreal. me on FIFA. He beats me in knowledge. He's a Tottenham <laughs> fan as well, so you know we we share that. He knows but everything. I could have seeing that first fixture. I thought hey, I'm going to finally get one over on that. I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just, I just didn't, just by, just by a point, he pit me, and I that's just, so that's, funny. That's, and that's the, the it for the season now because there's that many people that have joined. There's not enough fixtures. Like me and Jay don't actually play this season. I've checked. That's um, mad. That is. Yeah, because there's that many people in it. So that's my chance with Ross now. And now I just need to hope that someone else beats him. Come on. Well, you got. And also, his, 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 his name, you'll me. see him on the fantasy post because his name's F the back pose. He's, <laughs> he's just going to be shit. He's, he's, he's making just a come in of our, and he's, he's, <laughs> he's going to win. He's going to win. And we're going we're to have to announce that the winner is fuck the back pose. <laughs> he's such Bastard. a dick. I mean, I've got to uh, give a special shout out to Richard, who's my old school friend, and he's 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 a United uh, Newcastle fan, and his name is The Takeover, and he won, and he had ninety four points. This, I think uh, Elliot came second as well, didn't he? Uh, he's third here. He's got seventy-seven. Third. So yeah, like okay. Pete, like some of, at least some of our mates are smashing it. Yeah. Well <laughs> but, done, Elliot. Uh, well done, Richard. Did you say? And well done, whoever's between Elliot and Richard. Well, uh, special mention to you. Con, Con, Con Omega, the absolute well done, man. You. His name is well, well done. Well, well, 
<laughs> well done, lad. All right, that's it for part two. Part three, we'll talk about the upcoming games. Welcome back to part three. We're just going to talk about some of the games coming up. And because Adam wasn't here, this is his segment to talk about his game against Palace. All right, guys. Um, it's Adam. I know you're missing me. Don't worry, I'll be back next week. I'm a bit busy, you see, making money move, you know how it is. Um, but, yeah, United play their first Premier League game on Saturday against Crystal Palace. Uh, obviously looking forward to it. Uh, it should be an interesting game. You know, we, we, we've played a few pre-season games, not had the best results. We got beat off Villa last week, as you might recall. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we should beat Palace. They they beat Southampton just 1-0. And they're actually playing tonight in the EFL. Don't know who they're playing, but that could come into our advantage. Uh, I mean, we should be beating them anyway. Our team's stronger. I'm looking forward to seeing Van der Beek play. I think he'll start. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's Palace, isn't it? You know, I don't have much to say on it. I think we'll... We'll beat them convincingly. Uh, I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. Get a win in the bag. First game of the season, that'd be nice. But yeah, in terms of the week's results just gone. Bit of a gutting one for you, innit, Josh? But anyway, I'll let you talk about that one. I'll leave you to it. Um, don't miss me too much. I'll see you next week. Tell your dads. Wow, very interesting, Adam. Loved all those points. Can't wait to have you back next week. Josh, <laughs> Spurs beat Southampton. That's your next game. How are you feeling about um, it? Yes, yes, we definitely can. Did you ask me if we can? I said, them? what do you feel about it? <laughs> yes, um, we can. Right, in that case, <laughs> in that case, no, I don't feel about Good. it. Um, <laughs> it's a difficult one. Mm-hmm. I really wish they'd won or drawn against Palace. Really? Because now we're at that stage where they are a good team. They've, you know, they are. They've, they've shocked a lot of teams. Yeah. They're, 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 they're one of the most established Premier League teams that aren't, yeah. you know, Everton yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the top. You know, they are just always there, aren't they? They're mm-hmm. a good team. Hassan Hootel is a manager that I rate massively. Um, they scare me. Um, but, we're better than them on paper. We are, but that means fuck all, doesn't it? In the prem, mm-hmm. so, Danny Ains is coming uh, to, gunning for you. Just so I can be the first one to say it, and I will, I will say more about it. But just so I can be the first one to say it this season, we should probably beat them. <laughs> we might have. That uh, is, that is, <laughs> we should have named the podcast that you know. <laughs> we should have named the podcast. <laughs> fuck the Back Post podcast. Uh, no, we should have been. <laughs> apparently, there's a, a bit of a rumour that will not happen that Mourinho's turned his interest towards Danny Ings. Uh, he'd be mental, to, I think, to leave Southampton after like having a sh- torrid time of it at Liverpool yeah. and then finding his form and almost winning the Golden Boot. But. You know, so maybe if we just nick Danny Ings before that game, it'd be great. Nah, the, Danny, um, he, if he stays at Southampton, he still has a good chance of playing for England in the Euros. He's not leaving. No, yeah, and obviously, like, stay away um, from him. The one thing I would say <laughs> is, I think he's a good player, and I think he's going to do well for them. But just as it stands at the moment, while he's still finding his feet, and I don't want to even say it because I feel like I'm going to jinx it to go wrong. But Son, via, via, uh, running at Kyle Walker-Peters, should be Son's day. Should be, but you know what that means. Should you be. You know what that means. Kyle Walker-Peters means is going to be the best right back in England that day. It's going to be Kyle Carfin-Peters that day. <laughs> yeah. Um, he'll not only Meg, that's... He'll, he'll dop his son, Meg him, and then fucking score a screamer. That's what will happen. <laughs> I think we will pick up our first win of the season uh, against Southampton. I, th- I do actually feel relatively confident about it's... it. I, th- I think as, as as well, Hoiberg will have such a point to prove mm. as well that if he if he if he's if he's going to be a Tottenham player, he cannot have a shocker against the the club that he was captain of. <laughs> that now all the fans are saying was actually bag average just because he wanted to leave, but he was their captain and actually took the captaincy off James Ward Prowess. And then when he said he wanted to leave, they gave the captaincy back to James Ward Prowess. It was kind of awkward. So 
Yeah, you know. and I think it's it's important for you guys. Like, I know it's early in the season, but if you don't get a win here, you just you, you you're opening the gap up very early on, and you you're building yourself a mountain to climb from the get go. So it's a, it is actually quite an important game for you guys, I think. No, no, absolutely. Like it's time to liquidate if we lit now. <laughs> uh, it's the only way. <laughs> yeah, uh, it should be okay. It should be good. Um, I think that it'll be okay. I think you know Son and I think hopefully Bergvine will start as well over Lucas. Sorry, Lucas, I do love you, but hopefully we give Berg. Bergvine's a good player. Bergvine a Berg chance. Mm, uh, I really like Bergvine. He's uh, what everything that Pepe should do. Let's continue <laughs> to your game, Jay. Chelsea v Liverpool. Right, <laughs> it's the, it's a it's a huge game to have coming up on Sunday. And uh, listen, it's it's one of the, it's 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 Liverpool, isn't it? You know, we we don't expect to win this, especially in in even though a lot of teams, have, a lot of people, mm. sorry, have come out and said Chelsea, you know, should be the ones contesting them this season. I still don't think with win, obviously, still not favourites. But that being said, last season we always gave them a good game. We always did the Super Cup very early on. It went to penalties and we were, and we just lost on penalties, which is always a 50-50 kind of. We really took it to them that game. Uh, the Right at the end of the season, after restart, that was that, that mental 5-3 game where like they were just slapping us, but we just weren't giving up. Like Pulisic just kept running at them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we always do give Liverpool a, a good game. And this will, this will be an interesting one to see, like, some of the new boys come in more. Like obviously, we saw Werner and Havertz come in, but uh, like I don't know if Thiago Silva will be able to play. But if he can, he might start. And yeah, I'm 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 weirdly optimistic as well. Uh, Leeds Leeds played really well against uh, Liverpool, and they for me they showed a couple weaknesses, only a couple weaknesses, and I say I use the word weaknesses loosely, but like. Trent Alexander Arnold didn't have a great game, and I don't think he had a good game for England. Two good games for England either, so you know I think that could be something we exploit. Uh, I mean, I could say Van Dyke made a mistake, but that's going to be the only mistake he makes all season. It's going to be a good game, right? Two points. Go on. You've been weirdly quiet. One. I have. I've been listening, but annoyingly, I wanted to make a point right at the start, and then you kept going and going. So, I'm going to do it. <laughs> but first point is, um, I don't think Thiago Silva should play. I know I have a bit of an agenda here, and I think he's too old. But I think, just in terms of pace, yeah. I would not want to throw Thiago Silva in against Mane and Salah. I, it's not. Something, I get that, especially with a player like Firmino, who can just do little, like the best little. Two one touch flicks. Around yeah, no, I, I get he that. Really, but you know what? I'd say, I'd say to um, count that. I'd just, I'd say, I feel like you know Frank did this a lot last season. He might go to five at the back, and if Thiago Silva can play with him free, and have Zuma and Christensen around him or Asby around him, like they have more pace and they can cover for that. Do you know what I mean? And and then with the win, I hope you don't do that. I hope you don't do that because I think you've you've got to rely on that attack now. I think you should stick with four at the back because you've got so many bodies. I, I just think again three. in some games uh, like this one, for example, we might revert to that to benefit. Okay, and my players. second point, which is I think far more important, is the first thing you said there is it's Liverpool. We don't expect to win. Not having that anymore, Jay. I'm not having that anymore. Yes, you are. No, we're not. Our team haven't. Yeah, our team have. Like, we've bought you are, you well, are, but our team. Have, this is their second game. Jay, you've bought well. You've had. You've had the transfer window to end all transfer windows. Yeah, no, but like, uh, yeah, but like this is you, the second you, game you, against no, the I, best I've team. I said this at the start. You don't need to win the Premier League for me to say you. I will not say you're a failure. No, if you yeah, don't, no. But you have to be going to Liverpool with the attitude of you are as good as, as a team as Liverpool and can. You know, yeah, okay, of course, yeah, yeah. The, it's it's you, City, and uh, Liverpool. Yeah, no, sorry. If oh, Chelsea uh, will no. go in with that mindset, even Werner in his post match interview, like he had a little knot to his knee, and the the uh, the guy goes, "Ah, oh, do you think you'll be out for Liverpool?" He goes, "No, you're you're always fit for those games." Like he sounds up for it. Frank's he has a weird voice. He's, he's, he's very. You're making him sound he's a lot very German. Cooler than yeah, he is. no. He, 
Also, just as a quick side note about Timo Werner, I got really pissed off when he said that he was surprised that the Premier League had big defenders, as if Bayern Munich don't have <laughs> Nicolas Sula, the eight foot man. It doesn't, it doesn't. Like, what, what's going on in Germany? Are all the centre backs four foot Other two? than him, yeah. Like, <laughs> what's he on um, about? Shut up, Werner. Like, you have big nah, centre backs. Now, but listen, yeah, he, like, the, he, they'll be. Chelsea, I'm saying, I'm saying this as a fan, I don't think we'll win. And I, but I don't think Chelsea will go in with that mindset. I don't. They'll be fucking up for this game. Frank will be up for it. I mean, if if last season's anything to go by with the team that we had then and, and the good games that we, the performances we put in against Liverpool, this season with better players like Werner, Havertz that can come in. Hopefully Ziyech could come in as well because I think he's an incredible player and he could he really brings something to our team. We can go and compete and go, probably get a win out of it. But I'm saying like as a fan, I don't think we will win. But that's my mentality, not theirs. Do you know what I mean? Okay. But but it's, okay. I'm I'm yeah. a, I'm I'm excited for this game. Don't get me wrong. It's 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 always nice to have a big game early, get out of the way with, have the excitement of it. You know? Do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's they're still Liverpool. They're still Liverpool, man. It's still annoying. But if Le- Leeds can get three goals in, surely Werner can get a couple in. Famous last words. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, no, I mean, I hope that, I don't know, I hope it really happens. I hope that literally from kickoff, all 11 Liverpool players run into all 11 Chelsea players, resulting in 22 broken legs. Um, <laughs> but I don't see, I don't, I don't see that happening. <laughs> Do um, I'd put a bet on that, Josh. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think we're done here, aren't we? No, that's that's it, that's it really, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll see you next week. We'll see Adam next week. Uh, well, we saw Adam just then, actually, didn't we? But, um, it's all good. And, um, yeah, up the Spurs. Right, <laughs> just looking at awful outro. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you t- uh-huh. like and subscribe. Tell your dads. That's how you do it, intro, Josh. Fuck Tell it. Tell your dads. <laughs> yeah, an intro. Oh, yeah, no. You fucked it no, up, didn't you, Jay? No. <laughs>